All right, guys, hands up if you are the kind of person who has spent hours and hours on the visual side of your stream, making sure everything is perfectly aligned, your camera is set up properly, your alerts and your overlays. But when it comes to the audio side of your stream, all you've done is plugged in your microphone and added it to your streaming software. And I'm not blaming you, I'm a culprit of this myself. I often spend far too much time on the visual side rather than the audio. But why is that? Why do we settle for good enough when it comes to audio, when actually just spending 10 to 15 minutes on your audio setup once can make a massive difference to your stream? Well, settle no more, because in this video, we're gonna be going through five steps that you can implement today with your current microphone that can massively improve the audio for your live streams. All right, so step one is all about microphone positioning, making all the changes in the physical environment to actually give your microphone the best chances of picking up a clean signal. Now, most microphones nowadays come with a built-in or attachable desk stand, which is super convenient, but will actually leave the microphone pretty far away from your mouth, meaning you have to crank the gain to be able to get a decent audio level. Not only that, but these stands encourage you to position your microphone kind of close to noises like your keyboard and your mouse, which are typically noises you want to avoid hearing on your stream. So what I'd recommend doing instead is getting a boom arm, which can attach to your desk and your microphone, and then you can use that to raise the microphone up off the desk, away from those noises and closer to your mouth. I use the Rode PSA-1 microphone arm, which is pretty universally popular, and it does work well for a whole handful of different microphone weights, but it is quite expensive of about $100, so you don't need to go and spend that much. I actually used one of these for about two or three years, which is just a cheap microphone arm from Amazon. The only real issue I'd say with these is these exposed springs can be a little bit noisy if you're adjusting them while streaming, but they certainly do the job for a good couple of years. So now your microphone is hopefully raised off of your desk and you can position it closer to your mouth, but just how close to our mouth do we actually want to position it? Well, the boring answer is it completely depends on your microphone, but a good starting point is usually about three to six inches inches between the microphone capsule and your mouth. As a general guide, I tend to set up my microphones with between four to eight fingers of width between the microphone capsule and my mouth, and then I'll listen back to a recording and see how that sounds. If you're too close to the microphone, you're gonna hear some unwanted mouth noise like salivating and breathing. And if you're too far away, you're gonna get more of that room noise and reverberation and less low end from your voice. Another microphone positioning tip is that you'll want to have your microphone off axis so that you're actually speaking past the mic rather than directly into it because this will help with plosives the p and b words that blow a lot of air into the microphone since you're speaking past the mic instead this will definitely help with those and it'll also help your audience be able to see your mouth rather than it being covered by a microphone if you're still struggling with plosives even after moving your microphone off axis you might want to invest in a pop filter or windscreen uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes some designed for specific mics and some that are more general that just attach to your boom arm but these will disperse the large sound waves before they cause distortion and they're pretty cheap. I think this cost me the equivalent of about six or seven dollars on Amazon. Whilst we're on the topic of microphone positioning, if you are streaming with a microphone that has multiple different polar patterns selectable like the Blue Yeti or the HyperX Quadcast, please make sure that you have set it to the cardioid pickup pattern, which is the one that looks like an upside down heart and make sure you're talking into the front of the capsule. Seriously, the number of streamers I see still talking into the top of the Blue Yeti it gives me nightmares. Right, so microphone positioning done. Let's jump into the fun stuff over on the PC. So I'm using the Elgato Wave 3, probably my favorite USB microphone right now, but this process will work for any microphone that you're using for streaming. Uh, we followed the positioning advice that we've just covered. So it's got a pop filter, it's raised up on a boom arm, and it's nice and close to our mouth, and we're speaking off axis. Before we dive into OBS and the filters that we're going to apply, uh, it's worth noting that you do need to set the gain correctly on your microphone. So if you look down here at the OBS audio mixer, you should see your microphone levels changing. If you don't see anything down here, you'll wanna jump into your settings, go to the audio tab, and just make sure that your mic slash auxiliary audio is set correctly to the microphone. Once that's set, you should see down here the meters moving and you want to adjust the gain on the microphone. So there's usually a physical dial on the microphone to make sure that we're speaking in this yellow range here around minus 15 decibels. Once that's done, we're ready to apply our first filter. So come down here to the little cogwheel next to our microphone, click that and go to filters. So the first filter we're going to add is a noise gate, which effectively closes a gate. It turns off your microphone when you're not speaking. So none of that background noise filters through whilst you're not speaking. So if you click the little plus icon here, you can see that there is a noise gate option, but instead actually we're going to use an expander. 
An expander similar to a noise gate allows you to turn off your microphone when you're not speaking. But the advantage is, is that there's an adjustable ratio for how much you want to reduce the gain when it hasn't hit that threshold. So it allows for a smoother operation than the static open or shut noise gate. Effectively, what this is doing is just making your quiet sounds even quieter. So when you're not speaking, your room noise or your computer fans won't be easily heard. So we can click the expander option. We can name this whatever we want. I'm gonna leave it as expander. And we're gonna change the preset from expander to a gate. Now ratio, this is the amount of reduction that's going to apply to any sounds that are below the threshold. So at 10 to one ratio, which is the default, that's gonna operate very much like a traditional gate where it's gonna basically be open or closed. I prefer something a little bit more natural, something maybe around four to one ratio, but feel free to adjust this depending on how much you want to reduce that background noise when you're not speaking. Now threshold, this is the setting really that you're going to have to figure out for yourself and I'll help you through that. Effectively what threshold is, is this is the volume at which the expander will no longer start reducing your signal. So any volumes above this level aren't going to have the expander applied to it and all the sounds that are below this volume level are going to have the expander applied to it and reduce the volume even further. To calculate what we want to set the expander to, let's disable the audio filter by clicking this little eye icon here and then have a look down at the audio meter and be quiet for a second and see where our noise floor is sitting. So you can see for me that there was a little bit of noise around here between sort of minus 60 and minus 55, let's say minus 58 decibels. Now this is gonna be a completely different level for you because it depends on the room that you're streaming in and how sensitive your microphone is, but you want to basically set the threshold around about five decibels above this noise floor. So for me, our noise floor is about minus 58 decibels, five on top of that is minus 53, so that's what I'm gonna set my threshold to. Now if we re-enable the expander, you should be able to see that when we're quiet, there is no noise at all coming through on our microphone levels. If you find that there is still some noise coming through, then you need to up the threshold. And if you find that it's starting to eat into some of your words and some of your words are being cut up, then you need to lower that threshold back down. But around about five decibels above your noise floor is a great starting point. The attack and release times we can leave at their defaults, they are fine. And we're not gonna add any output gain here because we'll be doing that later in the compressor. Next, we're going to add an equalizer. Now this is going to allow us to shape our voice in a specific way, basically boosting and lowering specific frequencies in our voice to make it sound better. If you click the plus icon and have a look at the filters that OBS has included, you'll see that there isn't actually an equalizer included. So we're gonna to have to make use of a VST plugin that we can download from the internet to be able to add an equalizer. So head to the link that I've put down in the description. It is at reaper.fm slash replugs and download the uh, VST pack of Reaper plugins. Once they're installed, you don't need to restart OBS. You can just click the plus icon and then come down here to the VST 2.x plugin. Now I definitely recommend renaming this to EQ or equalizer just so that you know which filter is which. And then we'll get a drop down list of all the different VST plugins that OBS has detected, which is just our pack of Reaper plugins that we've just installed. We're only interested in one, which is the re-EQ standalone. So select that and then we can click to open the plugin interface. Now the EQ is probably the hardest setting in this whole video for me to try and recommend settings to you because it's completely dependent on your voice and the environment that you're streaming in and the microphone and so many different aspects. If me and you were both streaming from the same PC with the same microphone, the EQ would still be different because our voices are inherently different. That being said, I do have some blanket settings that I think are a good starting point that I've recommended to a few streamers before um, and it'll help you get started with your EQ. But please, please do play around with these settings and really identify which bits of your voice you want to boost and which bits you want to cut out because it really is dependent on your own voice. So as you can see, the yellow wavy line that is showing here is the current frequency response of the microphone and that blue flat line is our equalization. So where we want to boost and cut different frequencies. So right now it's flat, we're not applying any real EQ to our voice. So let's make sure we have our first node selected and our first tab selected down here. We're gonna change this to be a high pass filter because we want to basically remove anything below 60 Hertz, which is below the human vocal range. It's mostly just noise down there. So change the type from band to high pass. And then we're gonna just adjust the frequency down to around 80 Hertz, somewhere around 80 Hertz like that. And then we're just gonna narrow the actual bandwidth down to around 1.2. Next, we'll move to our second node so we can come across to the second tab here. And we want to just 
add a bit of presence, which is usually found between around 100 hertz and 200 hertz. So you can actually drag the node here to between 100 and 200 hertz on the scale and maybe just up around a decibel or so. So you can see here, we've gone up in gain to around a decibel between 100 and 200 hertz. And again, we can narrow the actual bandwidth of this down to around 0.9. So the third frequency that we're going to target if we move across to the third tab is the broadcast frequency, which is typically found around 480 to 500 hertz. So if we bring that across here and we boosted it all the way up, you can, you can hear that it starts to sound very boxy, like I'm speaking into a box. So we actually, rather than boosting this, we want to reduce it down, cut it effectively by a decibel or two. So to cut it, either drag down on the node here, or we can actually adjust the gain slider down by maybe a decibel and a half. And again, we want to reduce the amount of frequencies that this is being applied to, to something a bit more narrow around 1.2. Finally, I like to add some airiness to the higher frequencies, which helps with the S's and general pronunciation of words. So if we move across to this fourth um, node here, change the type from a high shelf to a band again, and at around five kilohertz, which is actually where this node is by default, we want to boost the signal by a decibel or so and um, reduce the bandwidth down to something around 1.5 so we're not applying it to too many different frequencies. If for some reason you're getting some high frequencies coming through that are outside of the human voice but something like an air conditioner, we can add a low pass filter similar to the high pass filter we added at the start. To do that we just click the add band button here, change the band type to be a low pass filter and we want to adjust the frequency right the way up to 18 kilohertz or so and then we can just narrow the bandwidth a tad and this will just cut out any of those high frequencies that are outside of the vocal range but something like an air conditioner like I mentioned. So now we can close down the plugin interface and if we disable the EQ you should be able to hear the difference that that has made to my voice. And if you can't hear the difference when I toggled the EQ on and off then you need to put some headphones on. Honestly Chris... The next filter we're going to add is a compressor and I've seen quite a lot of misinformation being spread about what a compressor does but effectively all it does is it makes your volume more consistent by reducing the volume of some of the louder sounds, that's it. This is a really useful filter in your audio chain for live streamers because if there's a moment where you get particularly excited and loud, you're not going to deafen your audience by all of a sudden changing your volume level massively by getting excited. The compressor will help reduce that loud noise back to a more consistent volume, but you can keep it sounding pretty natural so it doesn't sound completely robotic and the same audio level throughout. So let's add the compressor filter. We can leave this named as compressor and I'm going to start by disabling it so it's not actually being applied to our microphone so I can explain some of the options without becoming quiet. So as you can see here, some of these options are pretty familiar from the expander uh, filter and it's kind of exactly the same but it's applying to volumes that exceed the threshold rather than volumes that are under the threshold as was the case for the expander. So the first option ratio, this is exactly the same. It's effectively the ratio of gain reduction that gets applied to any volumes that exceed the threshold. So the ratio here that's default of 10 to 1 is going to heavily reduce any volumes that exceed the threshold. I like things a little bit more natural, as I've said a few times in this video, something around 4 to 1, but feel free to play around with 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 10 to 1 compression to see what you like the sound of. The threshold, as I said, is basically whenever a volume exceeds this threshold of minus 18 decibels, then the compressor is going to be applied. So the default here at minus 18 decibels is absolutely fine, as is the default for the attack and release as well. The final option here, the output gain, this effectively might be needed because when we enable the compressor, uh, effectively any volumes above minus 18 decibels are gonna be compressed with a ratio of four to one, which isn't a super heavy compressor, but we still probably need to add a few decibels of output gain. So let me start by setting this to around three decibels, which I think will roughly be about right. And then if we enable the compressor, we're hoping to see that our audio levels remain in that yellow section. So you can see here three decibels was actually a pretty good choice, but you might need five, six decibels depending on how heavy of a compressor we've been adding. The final step and the final filter in our audio chain is going to be a limiter. And this just has one sole function, which is to stop us from clipping or digitally distorting our microphone. So it needs to go last in our audio chain. We add it the exact same way that we've added any others. And the only setting that we need to change is this threshold from minus six to around minus one decibel. So this basically means that if we get really, really loud at any point, you know, we scream because we've had a great moment on our stream, we're not going to clip our microphone and distort our audio. It's going to limit it to a threshold of minus one decibel. So that's it. We've now completed the five steps to better audio, microphone positioning, noise gate or expander, equalization, compressor and a limiter. If we disable these audio filters, 
you should be able to hear the difference, especially if you're wearing good headphones between my microphone before and after. So I'll enable them again. And hopefully now you can hear that it is more consistent audio, a better equalization and less noise coming through when I stop speaking. If you've reached this point in the video and you've enjoyed following along with the tutorial, please do give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments what else you would like to learn in the streaming world. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.